righty, let's get ready here this evening here for Bible study. Getting ready for word. <clears throat> amen, amen, amen. Um, we thank you guys for, for coming in. I see that we got a few up there, Brother Sailor. I see Brother Grant. Uh, if you can, if you can, go ahead and share the actual um, share the the link. Let me turn this down here. I got a back feed here as we get ready for this teaching tonight. I know that God will move as he always does, man, and he is wonderful. He's awesome, and we truly love him for being who he is, man. And so we just thank God right now <clears throat> for being able to come into um, his presence tonight. Uh, see Brother Grant, Sailor, Fields. Oh, man, you guys are rolling in here tonight. And as we know, we're going to continue in the vein of unity. And we're going back to the book of Acts, uh, the second chapter. If you go ahead and follow me there, we're going back to Acts, the second chapter, where we'll go ahead and we're going to break bread right there. We're going to break bread tonight <clears throat> because there's so much meat in that actual text that God is going to enlighten us to be able to do his will tonight. Amen. So join me in the word of prayer as we get ready to go into this teaching tonight as we expound on scripture. Great and mighty God, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for this platform called EI Ministry, Father. And God, as we continue to move forward, God, in the vein, God, cover me, cover our family, God, cover all those who are attached to us near and abroad, Father. Allow us to come on one accord in unity, God, to be able to fulfill our actual purpose that you have for us in this season, in this year of 2024. God, we know that you are mighty. You may, we know that you are awesome. God, we know that you are true. And God, based off of the integrity of your word, God, we ask that you keep us, you guide us, and you prepare us for what we will come up against, God, because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we know that, God, you are a living God with a living word that will change and transform our lives. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. And so tonight, tonight, um, we want to go ahead and get into this tonight. Such a powerful teaching. I want you to go to Acts um, the actual second chapter last week we talked about we talked about um about how to deal with the fact of um, unity how a church can grow in unity and now i want to go ahead and expound on what unity looks like how unity look like what what is the actual consequences or the actual results of unity <clears throat> And I think that that would be a great thing, a wonderful thing, so that we can go forth and be able to give you exactly what you need. And so the scripture tonight I'm going to be coming from is I'm going to recap right quick and I'm going to go ahead. And so what we talked about last week was the fact that we talked about <coughs> once the people in the church, the early church, once they were baptized, once they repented first and they got baptized, that they were that God added 3,000 and so he continually and he added 3,000 then we talked about what occurred of the unification of the church when he added 3,000 they continue continued devotedly themselves to the apostles teaching so we talked about how you have to be not only in Bible study but you have to understand that the teaching that God is giving you shows your actual unity and your commitment you're on one accord <clears throat> not only that he went to the point of fellowship and fellowship is a is a close bond with one another. Then we talked about the breaking of bad bread, which is the Lord's Supper. But not only the Lord's Supper, but we're talking about being in commune with one another. And then we talked about prayer. And we're going to soon uh, roll out our new in a, uh, actual corporate prayer uh, for the ministry. But and then we started talking about in the 43rd verse, it talks about everyone kept kept feeling a sense of awe of the many wonders and signs that were taking place through the apostles. And so that's why I want to start off on that 43rd verse. And we probably make it down to the 47th, maybe, but that's why I want to play with tonight. And, and I want to go ahead and, and as the spirit of God moves, I want to go ahead and get in there. 
So I want to go to the actual, and everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. And many wonder signs were taking place through the apostles. A sense of awe. Many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. A sense of awe. And so when you're talking about the sense of awe, <clears throat> we're talking about what really? We're talking about they spoke of reverence. They spoke of reverence, respect, and honor for God. They had a sense of awe, but they had respect, they had reverence, and they had honor for God. Meaning the things that they saw happening or they were seeing happening was occurring since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which was literally blowing their minds. So the people were at a sense of awe because of the work of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. God's power at this time in the church was so amazing that it left the people speechless. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be in a place in my life that when God starts blessing me, that I don't even have words <laughs> in my vocabulary to be able to respond to the blessing that he has for me. The Holy Spirit was moving so in this actual church, in this actual, with these people in the early church, that they didn't have any word that they could respond to. They didn't have any word that they could say. God was doing some miraculous things and powerful things that they were speechless. That's powerful. It was their speech to the point that their mouth of the believers were hushed and their hearts were subdued. Meaning their mouth was closed, but their heart was subdued. And, and the believers gathered uh, after uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they were struck with awe because they perceived the presence of God among them. When God is among you, sometimes you can't even open up your mouth. When God is in your presence, sometimes you, he, you don't have the ability to even speak a word. The Shekinah glory of God will bring you to your knees. Come on, somebody. Will bring you to your knees to the point that you don't even have no type of words that you can say because you feel the presence of God upon you. That is a great place to be when you're on one accord with the Lord. We're talking about unity and respect. That's a great place to be. And so the believers were so humble and they stood in awe of the glory of God at this time. They were, and they were gathered and, and they were gathered based off of what? The actual message of God, which was the gospel. And it was validated. The message of the gospel was validated by what? By the miracles. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? The message of the gospel was validated by the action of God moving. See, let me tell you something. When, when God gives a real word, a true word through a vessel of God, there is action that occurs after the message. Oh, Lord, have mercy. When you're on one accord with God and you're getting the word of God and you're in unity with God, you should see some form of action based off of the message because God is a God where he will not allow his word to go out and not return void. You better hear me here tonight. When we're unified and we're preaching the gospel for what it is, when that word goes out, when that rhema word goes out, that spoken word of God, God validates the message by action based off of his message. Lord, have mercy. That's good right there, man. That is good right there. And so the apostles were validated by the message because the message led to miracles. Woo, Lord have mercy. Let me say that again. The apostles were validated by the message because the message led to miracles. There are many people who are preaching and they're giving a message and they ain't validating nothing because you ain't seen no miracles. <laughs> when you're preaching the word of God, the living word, the rhema word, there will always be a miracle come from the message. 
And so they were in wonder. They were in awe. They were in amazement based off of what was going on. And, and so that they had their actual signs and miracles. So, so, so that's what we're occurring. So, so 44th verse, watch this. And so it says, so it says, uh, all the believers were together and they shared everything. The new American standard version says that, and all of those who had believed, <clears throat> watch this, who had believed were together and had all things in common. They believed they were together and they had things in common. Let me see if I can help you tonight about this. Um, they believe and they were in one place, but they had things in common. Meaning, watch this. You will notice that they were gathered together, drawn together by the things that they had in common together. Watch this. And it is so tragic to say that many of the actual modern day churches today, Christians do not know what they believe. And the reason, if they don't know what they believe, then how can you come to the house of God and have something in common in fellowship? Lord, have mercy. You got to know what you believe. You can't be eating off everybody's table and believing this and believing that. Everyone has to believe the same God, the same word. And when they believe, watch this, no more than, than, than not this, uh, what I call charismatic type of belief. <clears throat> but when you believe, things happen when you come together and believe the same thing. And, and watch this. It's not a matter of you waiting on God to do something. When you believe, the spirit of God will move in you to get you to do something. Oh, Lord, have mercy. See, many people are sitting here expecting God to do all the work. When God says, you are my vessel that I have appointed to do the work. Lord, have mercy. So we sitting here waiting on God to come down and do something. When God says, I've already given you the assignment. I gave you the assignment in Matthews. I told you to be what? Based off the, be, uh, the Great Commission. I told you to go out be able to preach and teach the word to all creatures and baptize them in the name of Jesus. Name of the Father, name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. And so that is your work. Harvest is plenty, labor is a few. So we got to get out there and do this. We have to believe that. When we believe that, then we'll come together and we'll start sharing in what we believe. And we're sharing in the things based off of our love for God because of our belief for God. And we'll come together as one in God. And so they practice this thing. They practice, watch this, what you call oneness. Meaning they all had things in common. And they practice these things in community together. Because they had things in common. And so the reason their lives were moved in the direction of joy. Was because of, watch this. Because joy represents Jesus. Joy represents others, and then joy represents yourself. I think I said something. Joy represents Jesus, joy represents others, and joy represents yourself. It's inclusive, meaning when you become believers and you come together, you are sitting here understanding that when you are connected, when the Holy Spirit is moving in you and dwelling through you, he will allow you to do so much that you can't stop from doing so much. Based off the joy. Look in the 44th verse. It says. It says that their only concern. Was that there was enough for all. In the 44th verse. Watch this now. 44th verse it says that. And they began selling their properties. Meaning their possessions. Because of what? They were together. They had things in common. When you fellowship. You know what other people are missing. You know what other people need. When you come together, true fellowship will allow you to see the need. Jesus, then what? Others, and then what? Yourself. And so when they came together, they came together. They sold their properties. They were sharing them with everybody. And whatever somebody needed, they were taking care of them. Day by day, they continually with one mind 
in the temple. Day by day, after they got saved, they went to the house of God. They did what? The teachings of the apostles, they taught them. And they did what? They broke bread. After they left the house of God, they went to other people's houses. They sat there and they fellowship. Because guess what? They were a community now. They went house to house. They fellowship. Nobody had a need. They were taking their meals together. With Watch this. With gladness and sincerity of heart. That's where I want to be in verse 46. Let me break that down for you. Verse 46. Gladness and, 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 and fullness of heart. Let's go there. So I can expound on this for you tonight. Um, to give you clarity on this. Verse 46. Um, verse 46. <coughs> Watch this. The attitudes, the attitude of the believers in Jerusalem were marked by joy and unity. You got that. They were so gripped by joy and unity that they broke bread and ate and they went house to house. And they did all that stuff, right? Got that. But it was predicated off of gladness and sincerity. Watch this. The word gladness, gladness speaks of extreme or exuberant joy. They were glad for one another. And they had joy for one another. Lord have mercy. It, it referenced a, a, to be an extravagant or restraint joy. Meaning the believers had the joy that, that was overflowed and spilled out to someone else. See, joy ain't just for you. Joy can be for someone else too. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Joy ain't all about you. Joy can be about somebody else too. Lord have mercy. I'm preaching tonight. And, 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 and see, they, they, they were filled with, with joy. And then the word gladness, gladness speaks of, of more than a feeling in their heart. It, it, it speaks of an expression of the feeling that is in the heart. Watch this now. Meaning, watch this. When, when you really, when you really have gladness, then it only connects with the fact of being sincere. Oh, Lord. See, when you're really glad for someone, you're sincere for someone. Ooh, talk to me, Holy Ghost, tonight. When I'm glad for my brother and my sister, being blessed, being able to get something, I'm glad for that. I'm glad for these things to happen for you. Not only based off of Jesus blessing you, but Jesus is also going to be blessing me too. I'm glad. I'm feeling in my heart that I have a love for you. I care for you. And I don't have no issues with you. And because I am sincere in who I am in Christ. Because when you talk about sincere in this text, it speaks of purity of intentions. Meaning my intentions for you is genuine. Without any gall. It literally speaks of being smooth or free from rocks. I'm going somewhere. The idea of sincerity here speaks of the heart and the concentration and the affection and the desire on a single object. You still ain't got it yet. Meaning you enjoy the company of one another from the place of worship that you're in because it's genuine and sincere. Meaning that it did not come to a place of isolation of you wanting to be away from folks. I want to be around folks because I want to bless the Lord with Folks, come on. In unity. That's why the Bible says, I'm glad when they dwell together in unity. Because we can get so much more when we come together in Christ than we can get by ourselves being isolated. You can get so much more when you're sincere for a person getting blessed than you having an issue with somebody getting blessed. Come on now. It's about fellowship. It's a bond that we have. And so watch this. <clears throat> so how do you know that the Holy Spirit is moving? <clears throat> watch this. The Holy Spirit exercises such a great influence in the lives of believers. Watch this. Where there was no jealousy among them. Lord have mercy. <laughs> when somebody got jealous, that ain't the Holy Spirit. That's a spirit, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. When, 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 when God is moving and the Holy Spirit is moving, the Holy Spirit isn't jealous. 
<laughs> the Holy Spirit don't have an issue with you. Come on, son. The Holy Spirit ain't going to talk about you. <clears throat> See, because watch this. When the Holy Spirit was among the church, here it is, there was no criticism or, or, or dominating anyone, trying to sit there and think that someone was better than the other person. I'm talking about unity here. There was no quarreling among one another. Nobody had no issues. If something had to get done, they did it. They didn't have no problems. They had no concern. They didn't worry about who got the credit or who didn't get the credit. All they realized that they were lifting up God and the Holy Spirit was in them telling them that God is going to get the glory and that's the final story. And that's all I should be concerned with is making sure that God gets the glory. There was no quarreling among them. The believers who gathered in Jerusalem did not try to, watch this, try to outdo one another. There was no competition. There was no spirit of competition. These people came here with the sincerity of heart to do real ministry. Lord have mercy. To be able to worship genuinely. One person didn't get out there and try to out-sing another person. One person didn't get up there and try to out-preach another person. One person didn't get up there and try to out-pray another person. They all came on one accord so that God could get the glory. Lord have mercy. That's what unity is. Edify me by the Holy Spirit moving in you. If the Holy Spirit ain't telling you nothing, go and sit down somewhere. Because we're going to know it's not the Holy Spirit because it's not moving the body of Christ. We can get so much into a format and a learned manner that we get up there and we keep doing stuff over and over and over and over because we've learned it. But sometimes you have to hear the Spirit of God and do what the Spirit of God has charged you to do because that's where your power lies. It's not because you think you got the best voice. It's not because you think you can pray the longest. It's not because you think that you can preach better than someone else. That has nothing to do. It's not because of the fact you think that you're gifted in areas and you think you're better than someone. It is the sincereness of your heart that matters in what God will be able to show up and you will see the move of God in other people's lives. Because watch this. <clears throat> because they could not only gather, they don't not gather for worship in the same place. But they could gather, they gather for house to house with one another. Meaning their actual sincerity wasn't just in the actual, the presence in the actual physical location of the church. Their sincerity catch, I would say, catch on fire. And it wanted them, church was so good and being with them was so good that they didn't want to leave the people that they were with. They didn't want to end it that they went to their house and eat because it was that good. I'm going to tell you something, man. I, I, I'm amazed at the old church, how the old church lasts so long, was how the old church, what they did was that they did a lot of eating. People bring the collard greens in the trunk. People bring the actual uh, the lemonade. People have the, the cone bread. <coughs> People have different food. But when they had an event, everybody brought something and when they came together, nobody had no issue with one another. Nobody had an issue with no one. Nobody sat there and complained. Everybody came together. Everybody did it because it was all about uplifting God and coming together in fellowship. Because they knew one another. My mother, my grandmother knew your mama, your cousin, your brother. They knew the people in the, in the community. They knew people in the neighborhood. And that's what it's all about, dwelling together in unity. And that's what it looks like. And so they love one another. And they were loving toward one another after worship was over. And so they wanted to spend time with one another. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And so they grew that way. But watch this. Look at the 47th verse. 47 verse. <coughs> it says that they praise God. And they were liked by all the people. Every day the Lord added those who were being saved to the group of believers. Let me go to the New American Standard Version and read that. Watch this. It says, um, 
praising God and having favor with all the people. Praising God <coughs> and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Watch this now. Praising God, having favor. Let me go ahead and help you out with this in the 47th verse. We got to it. So now let me finish it up tonight. 47th verse. This verse, we're talking about believers. Watch this, believers magnifying God <clears throat> because they were being magnified in numbers. Don't, don't miss that. They were magnifying God and God was magnifying their numbers. How are they magnifying God? They were magnifying God by praising God. Lord have mercy. They were praising God. And so this word praise here in reference to the lifting of the greatness of God. Basically, they were bragging on God. <laughs> they were bragging on God. When you praise God, you're bragging on God. Lord have mercy. I, I, you know what? That, that's, a, that's a powerful thing right there. When you're praising God, you're actually bragging on God. I, I hear people brag about the, 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 the greatest basketball player to play the game. I had them brag on LeBron. I had them brag on Jordan. I had them brag on all this. But how many people do you really hear brag on God? <laughs> Come on. When you praising God, Lord have mercy, I'm bragging on God. God, you are bad. God, you are awesome. God, you are surreal. God, Ain't nobody like you. Man, God, let me tell you something. Keep doing what you're doing for me. God, you are the greatest. God, I ain't worrying about having no haters because, God, you're standing in for me and you got a hedge protection around me and nobody can't touch me. Baby, I'm bragging on God. God is my protector. God is my strength. God is my power. God is my God. He is my friend. He is my ultimate I mean, he's everything to me because I'm bragging on God. And so watch this now. So the believers were gathered and they were bragging on God daily. And when they were bragging on God, watch this. This is what happened. It was, watch this. The results is what took place. Them bragging on God drew God to them. They bragging on God drew God to them. When you bragging on God, if you want your church to grow, brag on God. <laughs> because watch this. They were bragging on God so bad because of the actual fact that the believers, because they were bragging on God, other people wanted to come to God. Good God Almighty. They were bragging on God. And Peter preached the sermon, but watch this. Peter, the people didn't brag on their pastor. <laughs> the people did not brag on their pastor. They bragged on God using their pastor because it was God giving them the credit. It was God doing the work. See, Peter was the vessel. Some plant, some water, but it is God that gives the increase. You can't brag on man. You have to brag on God because man is only a vessel. That's the key. God gets the increase. And so they're preaching. So Peter, he didn't preach. And 3,000 folk came. And ain't nobody sitting up there uplifting Peter. Ain't nobody sitting there bragging on Peter. The people were bragging on God. Lord have mercy. That's what's wrong with a lot of churches. They have the pastor to put them on a pedestal and they start bragging on them, but they're not bragging on God. When you brag on God, that's when you're praising God. And then God will add to your house daily. That is the key. And so what happened was because of the people bragging on God, this was an important part of their witness because Jesus said that, that, that what happened was they recognized that the disciples through their love for one another 
and, and, and them showing love through worship for God because they were bragging on God. Watch this. Then God said, guess what? Since they bragging on me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to increase the numbers in their actual fellowship. Christ, the Holy Spirit, was active because of them bragging. <laughs> because they were loving one another. They were bragging. They were praising God, but they were bragging. Lord <laughs> have mercy. And people got saved because they were bragging. <laughs> That's something powerful, man. <clears throat> and then they were saved. And the word saved here in this text here means that they were saved from their consequences of sin. I mean, the people bragged so hard that they got delivered, people got delivered from coming from what sin could have done to them. That they left sin by repenting and became saved and became a believer. All because the people were praising God and they were bragging. Let me tell you something. Um, in unity, there is so much when people see a body of Christ unified. Because if God says, I'm glad that we dwell together in unity, watch this. That means he wants to be in our presence through that unity. And when we can put our selfish agendas and come to him with a sincere heart and not worry about what people ain't doing, but pick up and do what people are not willing to do. And we do it to the glory of God. And then we praise God by bragging on him. Then guess what? We have grown and God will add to our fellowship. So I charge you tonight, anyone out there tonight, I charge you tonight that you get to a place of bragging on God. <laughs> you get to a place of of saying, God, you know what? You awesome. God, you know what? You're, you're, you're fabulous. God, you know what? You're fantastic. God, I'm going to continue to brag on you in this season because you are the best thing that ever happened to me. You are the best. And I will continue to brag on you because I know you can bless me. I'm going to continue to brag on you because I know you can do things that no one else can do for me. I'm going to continue to brag on you, even though my situation ain't favorable. Because, see, these people were in favorable situations. These people were in a sinful situation. And even, watch this, while they were in a sinful situation, God, based on the people bragging, it pulled those people out of that situation. They became saved. Some of you right now are at the midst of going to a place where the people of God, when they start praising God by bragging on God, it's going to be able to pull you out of that place. So I charge you tonight to when you come to worship, brag on God. Tell him what he's done. Give it back to him and see how he will do or what he can do for you. Because there's nothing too hard for God. Nothing. That's what unity looked like. Come with a sincere heart. Come with gladness. Come with love. Come with not getting enough. <laughs> oh, that mercy. That you want to be around some folks after you leave because you didn't get enough. I love back in the old days that when we used to go to church functions and everything, we would hang out with one another after church. Because that fellowship was so genuine. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have big time telephones. We had them old rotary phones. And we didn't have the internet. We barely had one TV. We had black and white. Because TV went off at midnight. But what we did have. We had God. We had Jesus. We had the church. And our parents made sure that we went there every Sunday. And even when there were revivals, we were there throughout the week. And when you start bragging on God, Lord have mercy, it can change your life. <laughs> when you start bragging on God, praising him, and come to him sincerely, 
and not having issues with someone else having favor on their life. But thanking God that they did have favor, it can change your life, man. So God bless you, man. I love you, man. I pray that this teaching tonight in unity again, what unity looks like. How the people, how the early church did it, man. They praised God. They bragged on God. And even when the message came, guess what? You saw the signs of miracles and wonders all because the people preached the gospel. That's what it's all about. The gospel message is what compels God to move because God will not allow his word to go out and not return void, man. God bless you, man. We love you, man. Look forward to seeing you again on this Sunday as we come to praise God and we brag on God to expect a mighty move from God, man. God bless you. I love you. If you want to sow a seed tonight, you can go to www.eimin2020.com and go to our Cash App, PayPal, our Zelle, our Tiley, or our church track to sow a seed to us, man. God bless you. We love you, man. And brag on God.